Hello guys, and today we got here another very awesome video. We have here some monarchs, and I want to begin by saying you cannot say anything bad about this deck. You cannot say anything stupid about this deck, because if you do, I will go up and punch you. This is a tribute summoning based deck. You can't say anything. Yeah, it got a lot of good support that makes it fast, that makes it stupid, and might even be meta, but it's not, You, I just, it would make me really angry if somebody said this deck was bad or broken or was cancer for Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever. Because like, chicken game FTK, that's that's bad for Yu-Gi-Oh, but this is tribute summoning. Tribute summoning is something that Konami has been working with since the game came out. And it worked at the beginning of the game because Spirit Reaper was just broken at the time. And the game was slow enough where you could tribute summon Aeonite Parsoff, who let you draw a card, so like that worked um and so but then the game got too fast and tribute summoning has became either you're going for a monster like majesty's or vandy's fiend or you're playing specific decks like Klee's, or in this case monarchs and this is the essence of tribute summoning i mean some of these cards are really really old really old um so yes um don't think you can say anything bad about this deck because it's tribute summoning and tribute summoning is bad but they made it good without pendulums without pendulums which was one of the things konami did to make it better but nonetheless it is very very good um so yeah let me just go in with the new monarchs we have erebus and ethier erebus is a level 8 dark monarch and he has two awesome effects the first effect is if he is tribute summoned you can send two monarch spell or trap cards with different names when we hand our deck to graveyard shuffle one card from your opponent's hand field or graveyard so it's kind of like trishula it's like a trishula plus a virgil where you can only hit one but it goes back to the deck so uh, yeah that is definitely really good just get rid of everything he is zombie type um because <laughs> I faced somebody that was running Zombie World and he just wrecked me because I couldn't tribute summon and then I was able to tribute summon this guy and I was like, he, he's, yeah, I just didn't know. I was just so happy that he was zombie type. Um, besides that, he has a second effect. If this card is in your graveyard, you can discard one Monarch Spell Tracker, which is great because it's not banishing. Um, and then target one monster with 2400 or more attack and 1000 defense and add to your hand. So he's level 8 that can add himself or another level 8 to your hand by discarding a monarch spell or trap card. Um, so yeah, Athea. Athea, um, same thing if you, you can tribute summon them, you can tribute summon both of these guys just like the other monarchs, um, the mega monarchs by tribute summoning one tribute summon monster which is awesome, there's some combos uh, where you can go really insanely plus. Um, you can send two different Monarch Spell Trackers from hand to deck. Uh, special Summon another Monarch pretty much, or a monster with 24 or higher attack and 1000 defense. So that is something that's really, really great. Just being able to pop them down and uh, summon another one so that you can um, do a lots of damage. But that monster also goes back to the hand. That old monster will also go back to hand. So it's a great way to search out your Ryzas. If you summon out one Ryza, and then you're like, you know what, I want to get another Ryza so that way I can continue looping. Um, these guys will definitely help with looping him being able to add from grave him being able to get from your deck So definitely really good besides that he also has the additional effect if this card is in your hand You can banish a monarch spell tracker from your graveyard and after this it resolves tribute some of this card um, Do you know that you can use monarch storm first on your opponent's turn? And if you do you end up will have to end up using one of your monsters because he is a level 8 and to tribute some of the level 7 or higher You have to give up two monsters some people like to think that you can just summon them with one monster, unless that monster is like in their own Kaios or something. Yeah, you can, um, uh, you'd have to use both your monster and their monster, which wouldn't be too bad in the end, just tribute summoning them with your monster and then your opponent's monster. Or if you have a Kaios or a Monarch already out, you can just tribute summon him um, during your opponent's turn by tributing your one tribute summon monster. Um, for the Mega Monarch, we're running Mobius because being able to pop back row is great. Uh, Caius, I mean, I recommend having all the Mega Monarchs and all the Monarchs in your side. Those wouldn't be bad. Just and probably maybe even adding one more. Like we only have eight level eights, and I mean, one can add himself back to hand. So um, trade in um, shouldn't be too much of a problem. But just in case, it might be hard. It might not be a bad idea. 
there are some uh, problems with hands in this deck though, which I would talk about at the end. So yeah, have the other monarchs in your side, winning Mega uh, Caius because he blows up three back row, and Caius will get will banish a card. And if it's a dark, so if you're going against BA or Shadals, he will just get rid of all of them. Um, and he can target up to two if you tribute Caius or a Rebus. And then Mobius again, blow up back row Caius to burn or banish just a card, and then Ryza to do the Ryza locks, just be like tribute summon Ryza over and over and over again, back to the top of the bed. Back to the top of the deck. And then your opponent can't play the game Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it's got a Grasu all over again. So he is definitely good. Only two because again you can add him back to hand with Erebus. And then Mithra, the Thunder Vassal. Yes, yes. So um, this is definitely OCG. No clue when we're going to get this card. But I find it's the best Vassal. Even better than the new one that came out. The new one that came out is if it's normal or special summon. You can special summon pretty much a Vassal. Any mines with 800 attack and 1000 defense. And I didn't like that because it didn't come with any good way to spell summon himself out besides 101. Not 101, uh, 1 for 1. Um, and so I didn't like that because I didn't really see a good way to summon him out. But Mithra is just like, yeah, you can summon me out, your opponent just gets a token. Which isn't like the worst thing in the world because if you really wanted to, you could use Monarch Storm Force on it. Um, but yeah, you summon her and then your opponent gets a Vassal token, which is great. But then she's just there to tribute summon. So uh, not bad. Three wouldn't be bad, um, but uh, two works decently. A lot of times you will be using Monarch Storm Force, which you have an infinite amount of copies of. And we do have duality in this deck, so sometimes you can't even use her. Um, Jackie, of course, just to destroy all your opponent's monsters. Pain of Deity of Monarchs. This card is amazing. Because it's pretty much, yeah, it's a plus. You use that card, use Pandy of Monarchs to get rid of a Monarch spell tracker from your hand to draw two cards. So that's its main effect, and you can use that as many times as you want. Um, and then the, it has another effect where you can reveal three Monarch spell trap cards. Your opponent chooses one of them. Uh, so yeah, it's a plus one. Plus one. I normally, um, with the original Monarch, you can return Monarch spell trap cards from your deck, from your grave to your hand, to your deck, grave to deck, and then draw one. So I normally like to keep one in deck, and then I use the other two. And so, yeah, I normally like to keep one in deck, but yeah, this is just a plus one, and you can pretty much guarantee what you're gonna get. Um, cards I like to get rid of are definitely the continuous spell cards that I've already have. Like I'll get rid of this guy because he's good, but I don't care about him too much. Um, and if I have already have one of the returns or the Monarch erupt, then I will definitely get rid of those. But the original Monarch I do like to have. Um, two Tenacities, again we can return Monarch spell trackers from our graveyard to our deck. So two is really all we need and you can only activate one per turn, so a little bit slow, but not too bad. Of course trade in, again you can return him from your graveyard um, to your hand. So. You shouldn't have a problem as long as you can get to him. If you can get to him, then trade ends will always be live for the most part. Three upstarts, three dualities, just consistency. Um, running duality in the chicken game, um, or the spell card, which doesn't show try consistency, it's just an extra deck lock. Um, because going through three cards and just being able to choose is really good because sometimes with your hands you have too many monsters and it'll be like, I need trade in, and then you draw the band deity. Or you have too many spell cards and you draw in to trade in. And this deck doesn't work well unless you have a combination of um, both. You need to have both Monarch Stoneforth and AZ and one of these guys in order to do something. Otherwise, these are just all dead. And I mean, there's plenty of consistency. So, duality really just helps out with making sure you can get to the right cards. And then, three Monarch Stoneforth, that's the heart of the deck. It's just like, ah, you say bye bye to you monsters. You can't do anything. This card's stupid. Unless there's towers on the field, which I still think this card should be towers. Like, because here's the thing: if I lance my monster, I don't think it beats Monarch Stone Force. Also, I don't think Felgrand beat Monarch Stone Force, so I don't see how towers can beat Monarch Stone Force. Because to me, the way I understand it is that this card changes the rules of the game. Changes the rules of the games where you can use your opponent's monsters for tribute summoning. It doesn't affect any single monster. Bottom Towers is just like, nah, I can't be touched. I can't be touched. Oh, Destiny Hero Plasma. 
Uh, monarchs, March of the Monarchs. Yes, just be like, no, no Fiendish, no, no Breakthrough skill, no nothing, no Effect Bayless. Yuki Osagi, nope, nope, just nope. Uh, Return of the Monarch, add whatever you want to your hand. Um, if you need a level 8, you can add a level 8 if you want. To go for light, Rise of Locks, on top of Rise of Locks, you can search out Rise of So definitely not the worst thing in the world. Um, but you don't want to have too many copies of these because you, well, you, yeah, you can only use one of the, <laughs> only one of these effects and only one side turn. So two is kind of pointless. The original Monarch again, like I said, this card will return two uh, Monarchs with track cards from your deck, from graveyard to your deck, and you get to draw one, which pretty much means you can't be decked out. You like can't be decked out, and I mean with this guy in the graveyard, you can always add back a monster, to, so you can't. You can't be decked out. Like you should have no worries about that. Because I mean, if you have zero cards in your deck, in your yeah, zero cards in your deck, you should have monarchs growing trap cards in your graveyard. So you should be able to return two to your deck to draw one. That's having one extra in your deck, and then you can activate this during your turn and during your opponent's turn. So that's another two add, and then draw one. So it's just insane. But also the other fact where you can banish a monarch spell or trap card from your graveyard and special summon it as a normal monster, not a trap card, with 2400 defense. Who cares about its attack? Um, so that's a great way to combo with Mithra. Don't think I told you guys this. I'm an idiot. If you tribute summon her, you gain an extra tri uh, another tribute summon as a normal summon. Um, which is, so yeah, these work really well because you can summon her, um, this card out and special summon this card out and then get out two of the normals or maybe another big one or whatever. Or uh, maybe use this card and then one of your opponent's monsters or something like that to trivia one of the big ones. So definitely, definitely not bad. But I don't want it to, I definitely would rather have it on the field because just being able to go tenacity, search pandeity, yay I got two engraved, actually I have three engraved because I use pandeity as effect. And then being able to use Pandeity as effect, and then go like, one of the like, you should see the duels. Like, I just do so much drawing and so much searching, and then I just make a play, and it's just like, bye bye everything. And then we have this card, which is like, ah, skill drains at one? Nah. Um, if you have no codes in your extra deck, no codes in the extra deck. Um, and you control a tribute summon monster and negate the effects of all face up monsters on the field except tribute summon monsters. So in the mirror match, toss it. Just toss it into your side deck. But if you're facing any other deck except maybe Cleese, if you're facing Cleese, then I suggest tossing it just because you don't want to face monsters with high attack anyways. Um, Pendulum summon all my monsters with the main with most powerful attack. And all my monsters still get their effects, so yeah, toss this into your side deck. But against anything else, negate all their effects, so it can help out against a lot of matchups, just be like, oh, no Falco, no nothing, but you can still be dragoned from the grave. So yeah, that is the deck, no extra deck, which I think makes this deck pretty cheap, and as far as hands go, like I said, you sometimes draw into too many monsters and no spells, and sometimes you don't do too many spells and no monsters, um, so if you feel maybe you should have enough, some more level 8, it wouldn't be too bad. Um, of an idea. Um, I didn't like any of the other monarchs. Like Ryza, Ryza wouldn't be bad to put in, but most of the time you really don't. Like just its normal effect will like pop and clear. Like who cares if your opponent can or cannot activate it? Because in my duels, at least with what people were playing on Salvation, um, nobody was really playing anything that would be too harmful. And I mean, this should protect you. But well, then again, there's only one. I mean. You can always send it to the grave real easily, or search it out real easily with Pandeity because people will probably throw it in your hand. But then again, I seem to like to get rid of this card. Um, so yeah, this is a deck. Um, probably, I wonder how big this deck is going to be. Um, I don't think it's broken, again, I don't think it's broken, I don't think it's bad. It's just making a mechanic in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that's bad, good. Such as what Jin released of Ritual did! Sorry. I shouldn't go on tangents about spilled milk. But <laughs> I miss my release so much. But yeah, tribute summoning, bad mechanic, this makes it workable. And so does pendulums to one extent, but normally you'd have to be playing pendulums that are high level monsters too to make it 
most effective, but this makes it so, hey, no pendulums, and still effective. So, I give props to that, and anybody that says it's bad, or stupid, or whatever, they just want to play chess pretty much. They don't want to play anything except chess, or make Yu-Gi-Oh into chess. Um, where you can predict your opponent's moves 20 spaces ahead, or 20 moves ahead. Um, so yeah. Went on a little bit of tangent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this deck profile. There will be duels tomorrow. And I am thinking of doing side, uh, side frames. Yes, we are going over the OCG. Because eventually that stuff will hit the TCG. So definitely we need to go over that stuff. On that and I've already pretty much hit a lot of the decks in the TCG. And so I don't really want to hit anything else. I don't know what else to hit that's in the TCG. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. And leave a comment and maybe even subscribe. See you guys later. Bye.